we started uh, collecting in the 1970s. My interest started when my wife Ellen was getting her MFA at the School of the Art Institute. She really and her advisor introduced me to photography and I'm an obsessive compulsive <laughs> human being and so I thought, oh, okay, I'll buy one, and then one led to five, and five led to 500, and 500 led to a collection of thousands of, of photographs uh, over the last 35 years. This is America in the 30s, dust bowls and, and dams, and um, Thornton Wilder on the set of Our Town. I got interested in it because I could understand it. It had a defined beginning, 1839. You could understand its history from salt prints to garotypes up to silver prints, platinum. I could understand the technology. It also appealed to me because it was a new art form. You know, it wasn't something that people studied in school. It was developed outside of the art establishment. This is of Tiananmen Square in 1981. Look at the drive that these kids had then to learn. They sat in a square, there was no electricity, and they studied at night. These people are probably in their 50s now, so that's what the Chinese leadership of today had to go through. And that is a perfect example of understanding the people that you're dealing with. Having the art around reminds you to be thinking differently and to be thinking critically, right? Artists, if they are good, are outsiders. They look at the world objectively and they see it through their own filters. And as a financial innovator, you've got to be looking at things the same sort of way, not as they are, but what will they be like?